this is my van. It's a VW Caddy Maxi born in 2012. And I'm going to transform this into my pleasure van. In... <laughs> Not into my pleasure van. I want to transform it into a camper van that's going to give me pleasure. It's got 112,000 miles on the clock. And I hope to double that by getting myself on some amazing adventures throughout the UK and into Europe. Currently, the outside is in pretty good condition. She's quite a looker, but on the inside, it is rough as a badger's ass. It looks and smells like an old pub carpet, a place I've spent a good few nights on in my time. And now I'm an adult, I need to make sure that I've got a lovely clean space that I can relax back into. So join me on this one to scrub and clean and gut my vehicle ready to put in all my brilliant design ideas which are going to be coming in future videos in the future so from ugly duckling which is badger's ass we're going to transform this into the pleasure van righty-o let's go god i'm shit at doing voiceovers then quick look inside after all that scrubbing and jet washing we've got a semi clean car i'll give it a good final clean when i get everything complete but at least it's got rid of all the old grub of other people and now i can sit in it and feel clean myself the dash is pretty easy to clean because it's one of those crappy plastic ones which you get in all these basic vans there's a stereo which i'm going to upgrade at some point there's some pedals there's a place to put my cup of Yorkshire tea. And now into the back. And as you can see, it is pretty rough in there. It's been used as a builder's van for a good few years of its life. And because of it, you can just see how bashed up it is. All the wheel arches there, scratched. The timber on the side, it doesn't really matter about because I'm just going to use those as a template and renew them anyway. The backs of the seats are a bit trashed, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. And obviously, these wheel arches are going to have to have some sort of paint on. As long as I stop moisture getting to it, that's the main thing. The two back doors, though, that is going to be awesome. I'm going to turn that into my kitchen, and I have got a brilliant idea for that. Yep, it's pretty trashed up in there. The tradesmen over the years have definitely put their stamp on it. But I can't really say anything about that because I'm a tradesman myself. And because of that... It's going to massively help me do this van anyway because I've got quite a lot of skill and experience in this sort of area. So it's just a case of applying it to a van, not a house. So I'm hoping I can come up with some brilliant ideas that have not been seen before. And one reason for that is, is the fact that I've never had a van before. I've never done a van conversion and I am completely fresh and new to it. So I don't really want to copy other people either i'm just gonna sort of find my own path and make my own choices and decisions on it all and hopefully i'll come up with a product that is fresh and new anyway i'm gonna stop waffling and you can continue watching me gut this van taking all the bits out of it and washing and cleaning the sections that need doing and to be fair there's actually some interesting stuff coming up so keep watching see you soon
Well, as you can see, this has actually come up pretty well. It's very grey looking and obviously it's very scratched after all the loading and unloading of materials over the years. So I just want to bring it back to more of a black colour. So a mate of mine suggested this, which uh, he lent to me, and it is a tyre gel. So hopefully it will just sort of help recuperate this, rejuvenate this back to something that looks okay. It's a silicon based formula with citrus fragrance. I mean, we all need good, nice smelling tires, don't we? I might regret it though, because being silicon based, it does make this really slippy. And if I'm potentially putting pots and pans on there, mistake might end up on floor. Anyway, let's get on another go. Well, it definitely worked. Not perfectly, but in fact, let's turn it into a smile. It's not bad at all, is that? I think it will definitely uh, do. It's just brought it back to something like, and even though it does feel like an eel now, or a lubed up snake, I'll leave you with that one. Well, I wasn't planning on using this in the van, but it has come up so clean that I think it might go back in. 
obviously it'll save me quite a lot of time and money to put that back in rather than messing about making a new floor the good thing about it is it actually is shaped on the bottom to fit these sort of ripples of the van and obviously it is a sound deadener and insulative as it is so it will definitely benefit the van I might add another layer of insulation underneath put that on top and obviously I've got a hard wearing surface there which is going to last for years to come so yep very happy with that thing is it's going to take <laughs> at least a month to dry out I would say because of the spongy material that it's made from so this van build is going to take me a long time Well, I'm as proud as punch with them. Look at that. Ready to go back in that van, perfectly clean. Let's pause it right there. So this is gonna be my template for my final cut board. Currently, it fits like the proverbial waving a sausage in the Albert Hall. It is not good enough. So I need this to be perfect. So what I've done is where I've got a number 10, that is to add 10 millimeters at that point. 12 at that point and you get the idea from there i've also got a couple of minus numbers where i might be just changing levels or something and i've done this the whole way around the board so when i come to lay this down on my new piece of board i can cut it more accurately i've also on places where i need it to be a little bit more accurate especially on these sections where there is a curve to the window I've actually used some tape and formed it in tape so then I can just draw around that to get it absolutely bob on. And this will be a complete nightmare to sort out later on so I've given myself a fighting chance and I've thought ahead.
Whilst I've got the panel off, I've just got a few little things to do. One is to fix the door handle because it's not opening very well. So that's just the case of flipping off a little bit of a clip, giving it a few turns on the screw thread and then popping it back on. Perfect. This is really grubby so it'd be just nice to get it all down i can wash it fully give all this like some sort of upholstery cleaner and a good scrub and then from that point on any grime that's on it is yours not somebody else's but yeah it's pretty monkey right <laughs> let's see how this works then Look at that. Well, I've levered this cover off and it seems I might have broken a couple of clips on the inside there, but it doesn't matter because the hooks have actually uh, been broken off from these. So I've actually ordered two new ones, so I'm not too fussed. And if I show the camera, it'll just remind me exactly what screws go where. So that's just a tiny little silver one. It's easy enough, two clips on either side. Well, one clip on each side. Now underneath, again, got two more screws. Right, next one. bit stuck now I just need to unclip this light whoa and now that's off down she comes without stretching that wire too much There we are. Wow, it's a bigger space now. Yeah, this thing needs to come off for definite. That was a right chew. <laughs> it brought out some colourful language, that. And it's not often I... Uh, get frustrated by things but that was tough only because you're trying to get something out without breaking it anyway what have we got 
we have got a very clean roof here so this is all the section that just needs insulating you can see a little bit of sound deadening already in there but we sound deaden this and fully insulate it maybe bang a little bit extra in these bits as well hopefully stop some of that condensation keep us nice and toasty warm this thing is dirty just look at the difference in color there that is 10 years of dirt and grime building up after being used as a builder's van for a while within that period as well so as you can imagine it does need a good scrub so i went to my mum and dad's house and i've dug out of their house just a few little products i'm going to try them this is a oh, it's a hand shampoo for carpets that's a carpet and upholstery cleaner and this one is a carpet and rug stain remover so i'm just going to test them all out in different patches just sort of see how they come out and hopefully that and a ton of elbow grease will get this shiny and new worst case scenario i will carpet the lot and just uh cover up the muck anyway elbow grease it is let's go start with this one eh? and i'll let you know which product came out best because these are just household ones Do a few little patches first. Number one. This one next. Let's see what this one's like. Use a different scrubber. Dab it in a bit. Oh, this one's actually to fit into a carpet cleaner machine, but let's uh, just pop a bit on. Get another one of these. Actually, I'm guessing this might need a bit of water with it, so I'll just get a bit of water in sponge. Patch number three. So I'll leave it at that. And I'll let you know which one actually works best. You can see already they're actually cleaning it, so that one goes with that one. I think that one went with that one. And that one goes with that one. There we go. Well, first impressions on that, it does seem that this one has done the best, but I did put that probably in a higher concentration than it should have gone on. The other two have still done a bit of cleaning, but I've literally put it on, left it five minutes, and that is it. So if I get now down on my knees with plenty of elbow grease, I reckon it's gonna come nice and clean. So I think I'll water down some of that and give it a good scrub all the way over. So a bit of warm water in a bowl, and I'm gonna just add a dash of this. Let's see how we get on with that first. I just always, measure in the way I do my cooking and that is just sling it all in a pan. Right, let's have a look. I don't even know if I need gloves for this because it's not really a product you should be having on your hands I don't think. Anyway, let's pop a bit of this on. Maybe oh, that's what I'll do. I'll draw a line, cut it in half, get one side cleaned and just see how good I can actually get it. I'm pretty good at elbow grease. And that is always a big key in everything. Look at that, it's definitely lifting all that muck out. Excellent stuff. Man down, man down. 
you're right there, aren't you? You love watching me cleaning stuff, don't you? What a difference. That is almost new looking and this is still grubby and horrible. So whether it is a carpet cleaner that's working or just some good old fashioned elbow grease, it's working for me and that is the main thing. So anyway, let's get the rest of it done and I'm gonna give it a nice rinse off and then hopefully it will be perfect, ready to go back in. Ah. So there we go, that is gutting and cleaning of a van. I'm sure you've been thrilled watching me do that. That was sarcasm by the way. But it only gets better from here because we are going to do some sound editing, insulation and wiring. And I've come up with a plan for that which hopefully should be pretty interesting to you guys. And what else? In fact, my next video, I think what I'm going to do is show my window blackouts. I came up with a brilliant design for that and they work fantastically well. So if you're interested in making some sort of curtain or window blackout for your van, definitely take a watch of this first because it is something that you might want to do yourself. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you want to see the rest of my van build, then you need to subscribe and click the bell notification because then you'll get notified when my videos are out. Anyway, it's been a pleasure and I need to go get some food. So we'll see you on the next one. Take care.